ago, Michael Mulcahy prayed for us. I appreciate that. Thank you to him. Thank you to all of you who've been praying for the choir as we prepare, as we've been preparing to share this cantata with you. But know this, we've been praying for you too. Every week, Amen. we've been praying together for everyone who would be here today. That for the child of God, those who have trusted in Christ as their Savior, that you would be encouraged today. That you would, once again, afresh and anew, come to grips with the fact that Jesus died for you. And that He rose from the grave for you, that you may have eternal life and be with Him. If you're here today, a friend that does not yet know Jesus as your Savior, we've been praying for you too, that today you would come face to face with Jesus Christ the Savior, and that you would trust in Him, leaving this place a child of God different than you came. I pray that you would listen to the words of the song, that, that you would just listen to the narration and allow it to speak to your heart. Listen as we present for you. It is finished. <laughs>
The story of redemption begins centuries before Jesus was born. It starts long before the first Passover, before Abraham laid his only son on an altar, even before Eden. The Bible says that the Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. And so, God's plan was already set in motion. History unraveled the story year by year until at last Jesus came. For 33 years he lived among us. And at last, the time had come for the ultimate sacrifice to be made for our sins. Approaching Jerusalem, Jesus sent some of his disciples ahead to bring the colt on which he would ride in humility into the city. His followers began to celebrate, and thousands came out to greet him as news of his arrival spread. Here was the one that could be the king and anticipated for so long.
Son of God has done everything that had to be done in our sacrifice. The one who could have called the legions of heaven to fight for him.
invites you, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done.
scriptures in the Bible, and it comes from the book of John, chapter 14. John, chapter 14. You know, folks, what the choir sang about and what the Easter story represents, the truth of the matter is, Jesus did die for us, but he rose again the third day. And I'm going to tell you, John, chapter 14 says it better than I can say it. I want to read this to you. John chapter 14, beginning in verse 1. Jesus talking to his disciples. I'm sure they are wondering what is going on, what is happening. Um, he tells them in verse chapter 14 and verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you into myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Folks, that's not even the end of the story. Jesus died for us on Calvary's cross. By the way, the Bible said He came to seek and to save that very one that was lost. That's you and that's me. That makes it personal. But you fast forward a little bit. Jesus is going back into heaven and He's telling us, He tells the disciples and tells us today, this is not the end, folks. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare that place, I'm going to come again and receive you into myself that where I am there you may be also. And, and He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. But folks, that's not the end of the story either. Because He's coming back. And if you read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it said this, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which were asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. That is, Paul said, don't worry about those folks that have died in the Lord. Their bodies are in the grave because their spirit is in heaven with the Lord. Amen. He said, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also that sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them. That is, we won't precede them going up to meet the Lord. Verse 16. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain will be, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore? Comfort one another with these words. Amen. That is the end result. Because Christ rose again. One day we're going to rise with Him. Meet Him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And I know, folks, that there may be some here this morning that has never trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. Let me say this. You're here because people wanted you here. They love you. They care about you. And you're here because ultimately God wanted you here today. To hear this message of the cross and of the resurrection. Folks, when you think about all the religious leaders that have ever lived, all of them are in the grave still, except for one. And that is because Jesus, God in the flesh, rose from the grave, and He is now seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. We serve a risen Savior. And folks, if you don't serve that risen Savior today, you may know of Him here, but you've never trusted Him in your heart. Maybe today, we always give an invitation because we want to make sure that there's no one that walks out of these doors that has not had an opportunity to trust Christ as their Savior. And so, I want you to stand with me just for a moment, if you will. Stand with me just for a moment. And we're, we're going to give just a moment of time uh, of invitation. And we, we're, we're not, we don't uh, prolong this, but we do want to give an opportunity. Because, folks, the truth of the matter is, the same thing that I told Josh a few weeks ago before he trusted Christ as his Savior is the same thing I'm telling you today. And I'm, I'm not saying it to scare you. I'm just saying it because it could be true. I do not want you folks to leave this place without an opportunity to trust Christ as your Savior if you've not done that. Because who knows what's going to happen when you walk out the door. I mean, God forbid that anything should happen. But if it did, where would you be in eternity? With every head bowed, every eye closed, no one's looking around. I'm going to ask you two questions. Nobody's looking around. I'm the, one, I'm the only one looking, me and the Lord. But I wonder this morning, has God spoken to your heart? Is there one person, maybe one here this morning, that would say, Brother Wayne, I know about Jesus. I know about God. 
but I really don't know where I'm going to spend eternity. And I really would like for you to pray for me this morning. I'm not going to call your name out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I would never do that. But I do want to pray as I pray to include those who lifted their hands. But maybe that's you this morning. Brother Wayne, I'm not for sure where my soul will spend eternity. And I'm really concerned about that. Would you please pray for me? Would you slip your hand up right up or right back down? Nobody else is looking around. God bless you. God bless you. Any others? One more question and then we're going to pray. The Bible said that the ladies that came to the sepulcher to anoint Jesus' body with oil and to the with the spices, it said that they came and they saw and then they went and they told. And I wonder, there may be some here today that you have family, you have friends, you have loved ones that do not know Jesus. And you need the help of the Lord to tell them about the truth of the gospel, of the resurrected Savior. And you just want to say, Brother Wayne, would you please pray for me that I would be a witness like I should be? Raise your hands up and right back down. God bless you all over the building. Folks, truth be known, all of us have relatives that need the Lord. Need the Lord. So let's pray. Father, I pray right now for those who have raised their hands. Lord, I know that you came to seek and to save that very one. That was Lord, that included all of us. And Lord, I am so thankful that if it had just been me, if I had been the only one, you would have died just for me. And that is the case with every one of us. Lord, if it had only been just one, you would have died just for them. We thank you for that today. Lord, I pray for that one who is lost, who does not know for sure that they're saved. God, I pray what an awesome time it would be this Easter Sunday, a time certainly they would never forget that they came and, and trusted Christ as their Savior on Easter Sunday. So, Lord, meet those needs. And, Lord, for those of us who have loved ones that have yet to trust you, friends, co-workers, God, would you help us to have a burden heart for them? Lord, a heart that wants them to know this risen Savior that we know. Lord, help us to obey your command and to go and to tell them. Give us wisdom. Give us boldness to speak the gospel of Christ to them. Lord, meet every need and every heart in life as we do this invitation just now. I pray in your name. With heads bowed and no one's looking around, there's no music playing, folks. It's a simple invitation. If you have never trusted Christ as your Savior, would you come down to the altar and let me pray with you right now? Would you do that? Is there anyone who needs to come this morning, this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday, and trust Christ as your Savior? Will you do that right now? Just for a brief moment, we're giving an invitation to let you come. If God's speaking to your heart, don't wait. Just simply obey what God wants you to do. Will you do that? Will you come and pray right now? Will you pray? We've already had some. Uh, someone to come to pray this morning. Will you come? Will you let the Lord be that in your heart? As all of our other brothers and sisters right now are praying for you, they want you to come and to know Christ as your Savior. Please don't put it off, folks. Don't let don't let this time go by without letting God meet that need in your life. Will you come? Will you let Him meet that need? What a wonderful thing. The Bible says that the angels of heaven, folks, there are a number of folks praying down here at the altar right now. The Bible says the angels of heaven rejoice over one that comes to faith in Christ. Will you come and let Him meet that need? You may need to come and pray for a loved one this morning. Will you do that for a friend or a co-worker that needs to know Christ? And pray that God would burden your heart, that you would be able to witness to them. Maybe you need to come this morning. There are a number of folks praying. Listen, don't ever be ashamed. If God spoke into your heart about something, don't ever be ashamed to come and pray about it. Folks, that's a wonderful thing to hear God speaking to you and to obey. I can think of no other better thing to do than that. Will you come this morning? Will you let him be that need? He wrote every detail with grace and mercy. He arranged every moment to show his love. Only adequate response we can make.